Hey everybody, how are you doing? Welcome to the Sim Hangar. My name is Mark. Thanks very much for watching. And you join me today in my virtual office, looking out my virtual window at the virtual city. I actually have no idea which city this is meant to be. If you do know, it's one of the virtual desktop environments. Let me know in the comments below. But today we're going to be testing out the RTX 5080 GPU graphics card in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024, which has been a little bit of a challenge. But anyway, let's continue. I am using the Quest 3 and I am using it wirelessly with Virtual Desktop, which is the favorite way that I like to use the Quest 3. So let's just have a very quick look at my settings. I have been through these previously in other videos, so I'm not going to run through them in too much detail. I'm running it on my 14900K system with the 5080, obviously. It has 64 gigabytes of uh, RAM, uh, running it at 6400 megahertz. Obviously, the 5080 GPU has 16 gigabytes of VRAM. My settings, not a lot really to look at here. These are all pretty much default. On the desktop streaming app for Virtual Desktop, I've set it to automatically adjust bitrate, so this really isn't that critical here. Looking at the streaming settings, I am using it in godlike mode. The VR bitrate will be adjusted, etc. The frame rate, I am running my headset at 90 hertz, so using 90 FPS. Sharpening is at default, 75. I'm not using the pass-through today. Synchronous space warp, that in effect is uh, the artificial frames, if you like. It inserts an artificial frame between each rendered frame, and we will be testing that out today. But we're going to start off with that disabled. Snapdragon is, to all intents and purposes, does something very similar to what DLSS does in, term, in terms of upscaling. So we'll have that off for the test. And all the rest here are at default with the exception of show performance overlay. I will be showing the performance overlay. And uh, uh, if you press the top button down, the joystick down on both controllers simultaneously, that will show or hide the performance overlay. These are my settings. I am using AV1 10-bit for the Quest 3. It is a little bit harder on the system than the standard uh, HEVC in terms of compression and required computing power, but it does give the best visuals. I'm using virtual desktops implementation of OpenXR, which is VDXR, and everything else is at standard. The only really important thing, automatically adjust the bitrate, make sure that that's ticked, makes things easier for you. We can now start going into free flight, and we're going to be in the Cirrus Vision Jet G2 today, as I have been more recently. I've done a number of videos and comparisons using that being one of my favorite uh, locations and that's in uh, uh, Tokyo. We're going to be flying over Tokyo and testing the 5080 with various settings. Before we jump into sim let's just have a very quick look at the settings that we'll be using. VR, VR graphics, we're going to start off in uh, TAA mode. The anti-aliasing will be TAA. Then we'll switch to DLSS Super Resolution. World Scale is 110 because I do feel the cockpits are a little bit small. Dynamic settings are off. And the global rendering quality um, is going to be the same for all the tests. I'm not going to run through these in detail. These are the ones I'm using for this test here. I'll just show them. So help you make your own assessment. And of course, if your frame rate was particularly good, you would turn those up. And conversely, if not good enough, you could turn some of these settings down to improve performance. In addition to testing it out in DLSS mode, just bring up the virtual desktop memory again. 
as mentioned, we will also be trying uh, the frame generation, the artificial frame generation using the synchronous time warp. But to start off with, we'll have that disabled. Now time to go fly. Will you join me? We've just departed from the airport. I have my trusty co-pilot with me today. Now sometimes he appears with his mouth closed and sometimes he appears with his mouth open, which is not a good look. But pleased to see he's behaving himself today. We're on TAA. We're currently getting about uh, between 30 and 32 FPS and the latency is in and around the 30 mark, 33 milliseconds thereabouts. Relatively smooth, but as I look closer and as I look down, I can see there is micro judder in terms of the scenery. 29, 30 FPS. Now I am recording this video in the Quest 3 headset directly so there are some anomalies at times it may look like there's foveated rendering on as towards the end of uh, the image uh, the resolution does decrease that's not visible in the headset the MFD for example the map there is uh, quite nice and clear for me I can read it quite easily it may appear a little bit distorted to you but just make a note that that's actually not the such not the case for the actual flight in VR you may also ex see a couple of uh, judders and shakes and what have you that once again are not really relevant now this is a medium level aircraft in terms of complexity and what have you um, it's quite a good one for doing the tests there's some system depth to it it's a glass cockpit and so on so I decided to use this again there's the sky tree tower there take off autopilot 30 FPS, 31 FPS, relatively dense scenery, not doing too bad. Still a little bit of micro judder, but uh, certainly flyable, but it's not perfect. Well, what we can do now is let's try DLSS and see how that copes. Settings, VR, VR graphics, DLSS on quality mode, all the other settings left exactly as they are. And let's go back. Just give the FPS a moment or two to settle down. But we can see an uplift in uh, frames per second to 45, 46 now, 47. And as I look down, it's much, much smoother. So DLSS is certainly working. As this is a 5000 series graphics card, of course, this is DLSS 4. Very nice. I'm still getting quite a lot of detail. Let's just have a look here. Pull up and let... Yes, there's a bit of blurriness. For the numbers as they change I don't know how clear that will come out for you let's add a bit of power before I stall 47 FPS latency at 21 milliseconds in fact I say latency that's not latency that's in effect frame time the latency is uh, shown under the frame rate 65 milliseconds we don't really want that going over um, 80 or anything like that because then we will really start to feel the impact of that. 50 FPS now. The 5080 is doing a reasonable job. 
I have done a comparison to the 4090 and we'll have a look at those results afterwards. Under the bridge we go, which is obligatory of course. This is actually remarkably smooth. DLSS 4 is definitely an improvement, but not all the problems have been resolved. What we can do now is just try and add in some frame generation and see how that works. So let's once again streaming. We're going to put synchronous time warp to always enabled. Everything else will be left exactly as it was. Hide that menu. And let's head back into VR. Okay, so we've now enabled synchronous time warp and once again we can see an uplift in FPS. Big judder there. But by and large we're getting between 70 and 80 thereabouts. Latency has increased because of the frame generation, of course. That's one of the big disadvantages of frame generation, is it always comes with increased latency. Now we've got an airport there. I don't know whether we're going to be able to get down in time. But we'll give it a try. We are very high. It'll be interesting to see how it takes an approach to an airport. Gear is down, flaps are down. Speed 120 knots. Feeling relatively smooth at the moment. I'm very happy with this. With the frame generation on or synchronous time warp, they are, there's very definitely more of a blurry impact on the numbers as as they scroll well it looks like we've been able to get down a little bit of a long landing but that's okay let that speed wash off nice long runway Down. Manual brakes, we can have a look. Yeah, it's quite a lot of blurring on the numbers with frame generation. But anyway, I hope that this has given you some indication of the capabilities of the uh, 5080. I will now show a very quick comparison to the 4090, but it's just so that we have something to measure it by. The card is a competent card, it's a capable card. The drivers are genuinely not where they need to be right now. That is absolutely for sure. Uh, it is a little bit hit and miss, even with virtual desktop, particularly when you jump in and out of various menus and so on. So hopefully the drivers in the future should improve the performance of it. but. This is not intended to be a competitor to the 4090. It really sits just above the 4080 Super. Well, as I don't have a 4080 Super, the only comparison I could give, it was pointless doing a lower card, so I've used the RTX 1490. And these were the results recorded at the various graphic settings, using exactly the same parameters as per the 5080 test. The 5000 series of GPUs from NVIDIA, their performance claims are based largely on AI, processing enhancements and frame generation, the latter not being available to VR pilots. What we're more interested in is the raw rasterization capability of the respective cards. Historically, the new generation 80 cards would not be that far off the previous generation's 90 series. That gap, however, did widen with the 4000 series, and it seems to have grown even larger with the 5000 series. 
The 1490 in TAA mode recorded an increase of 40%. Over the 5080 in DLSS it was 24%. And in DLSS with SSW enabled, well the gap closed to 20%. However, that final result is deceptive as it was frame limited by the refresh rate of the headset at 90 fps. I mentioned earlier that this is a competent card, and it truly is. It's able to provide performance levels above the 4080 Super, but a generational leap in performance for VR pilots, it's not. And to be honest, I had expected a little more from the 5080. The value in this card will depend on what you're upgrading from, but already we're seeing that the third-party products are considerably more expensive and above the 1000 US dollar mark for the 5080. Does it represent bang for your buck? Well, that largely will depend on the price and availability of the product as well as the availability of the 4080 and 4080 Super in the market. One question that may arise is why didn't I test it with a higher resolution headset? Well, there's two primary reasons. One, the Quest 3 is one of the most popular VR headsets out there for flight simmers. And secondly, there are compatibility issues with the Pimax Crystal, Pimax Crystal Lite, Vajo Aero, I believe. So I've just not been able to do a fair test to date. I'll certainly revisit this in the future. The objective of this video was to show you the 5080's capabilities when under load, and it's not in any way designed as a best settings guide. 5090 is on its way to me, waiting for updated drivers before I do a review. And as always, I hope you found it useful and informative. Stay well, look after yourselves. I'll see you all again very soon, and ciao for now.